Hi, everyone. Hello. One more time. Come on. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. There we go. I feel like a teacher. Um, right, so I'm Gavin. I'm a digital strategist at Dotmailer. We're actually based just over there, uh, number one London Bridge. Um, so I haven't come too far for this. Um, right, so I'm going to be talking to you about email automation and how really to get the best out of email and, and stay at the top of your game. Um, but before I get into any of that, I always do one particular thing and I'm going to do it again today, which is I take a selfie at the beginning of any of my presentations. Um, I've got a whole host of these pictures and I don't know what I'm doing with them. Maybe I'll just store them up for retirement or something. Let's do this side. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I'm done. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no, um, okay. So, uh, why am I here talking to you guys? Uh, I work in email, and I'm a big email evangelist. Um, I'm always talking about email. It's kept me in a job for about 15 years. Um, so always thankful for that. Um, but when people talk about email, sometimes they, they, they think that we're, you know, we're losing email a little bit, um, that email is probably dying. Um, but that's, that's definitely not the case. Email is definitely still here. As I said, it's keeping, keep, keeping me in a job. Um, and um, it's always you know, the, the one thing that people are happy to receive. Customers are happy to receive email of all, age, all ages. Um, sort of those pesky millennials that we sometimes talk about as well. Even those people, they are happy to receive email. Yeah? And if you, think, if you think about it, if you don't have an email address, you're kind of left in a bit of a digital wasteland. Uh, look at some of these here, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram. If you didn't have an email address, you couldn't sign up for those things. Okay? So it's really important that we have email addresses, and you know, emails work very well for us. Um, but what sort of results are we getting from email? Well, let's have a look at this. Uh, over 50% of all UK marketers report an ROI of more than £10 for every pound spent. Pretty big, right? You agree? Yeah. And then more so, the uh, average ROI for email marketing in all of the UK for, for marketers is about £39. So big hitting numbers. You know, this, this is a reason why we're using email, for starters. But then, you know, we started doing some research with uh, the DMA and we released a, um, an email benchmark report. And most of the time when we do this report, it's on B2C emails. Um, but this year we started collecting B2B emails so we could get some, we've got some research on, on that. So if you look at the sort of rates we're looking at, uh, open rates here for, for B2, B2B are beating B2C you know, across the board, uh, coming in around just over sort of 20%. Um, What's the reason for that? Well, I, I kind of think it's because we're, we're having those conversations with people on a, on a day to day and kind of meet up with them and say, we'll follow up with an email. So we send that email and they're happy to receive it and they open it, obviously. Um, in terms of clicks, though, we're not getting as many clicks because I don't think we have as many clicks in B2B emails, whereas B2C, they're sort of forcing the, the click through to get people through to the website all the time. So that's probably why we're getting this sort of mismatch here. Um, but sort of diving down a, a little bit more, if we break down to industry, um, we see something kind of interesting there with industries. So straight off, we've got travel. Travel are coming in pretty high, again, about 20% uh, in terms of open rate. Um, and then we have you know, not-for-profit, which is a little bit lower, um, about 6%, and then publishing here in yellow, which was in around 7 or 8% open rate. Okay, so if we're looking at across the board, B2C, B2B, you know, 20%, you know, there's, there's room for improvement here. But what are we looking to improve? What, where are we trying to go? So again, we've, we've done some more research with um, Digital Donut, and we're looking at the sort of email program maturity. So where are you in your email program? Um, sort of the mainstream where we got number one, that's sort of the Stone Age. That's uh, Batch and Blast. You know, we're just sending out everything to everyone. You know, just that, that one email to go to, to every single person. But really what we want to do is go to this side here, where the point five is, where it's, it's more of a one-to-one -one approach. You know, we're sending one email to that one person. It's a relevant email for you, as opposed to it being for someone else, and that you don't feel special. But when we look at the numbers, you know, most people seem to be over on that mainstream side. You know, they're not really grasping those advanced techniques to get you over to this point five here. 
So you know, what we're going to look at now is how you can actually start to achieve those more advanced tactics. Okay? So to start off, first things first, we need to know who we're sending our emails out to. You know? It sounds pretty straightforward, because I think everyone in this room should know who your target market is. But within that target market, do you actually know who it is you're sending that email to? Do you know that person's preferences? We need to find more and more information about these people. Without the data, email's kind of useless, really. You know, we're not getting that, that sort of bite. I talk to a lot of people about the emails they receive, and they say, you know, is it marketing or is it useful? And if it's not useful, it's usually a marketing email. People don't tend to understand or think about emails as marketing if it's a useful email. But how do you get to that point? You need to find the data on these people, get more information from them to help pe uh, fuel the emails. So that means you're going to have to start collecting more and more information. You don't want to bombard people with questions, you know, collecting everything in one big go. Really, you should be doing it in stages. Progressive profiling. You know, getting that first bit of information you need first, email, maybe first name, last name, then go on and so on and so forth. But I guess there's a few things we need to think about when we're collecting data. So a couple of these points. Only collect the data you need. There's no point asking people for things you're not going to use. So Dot Mailer, we're an email marketing company. Um, there's no point us asking for, for gender. It just doesn't mean anything for us. You know, so if we, if we ask for gender, we're not going to use it. It's going to sit on the shelf. We're wasting our time collecting the data, and we're like wasting the customer's time having to fill that out in the first place. So there's no need getting it. Keep it brief. You ever met anyone for the first time and they just ask you loads of questions? What's your name? What's your favorite color? Where do you live? You know, can I get your number? Blah, 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 blah. It's too much. You don't need that. You know? Keep it brief. You know, ask a couple of questions to start off with, then you can, you can build up. They're not going to go anywhere. Well, unless you piss them off. But you, know, you, you, know, you can collect more data uh, along the line later. And then lastly, give them a choice. I mean, we should always be having a clear unsubscribe link on an email. If you don't, you should be. Um, but give people the option to choose what they want to receive from you. You, know, you could be sending different types of emails. They, they're not necessarily going to want all of your emails. Give them a preference. Give them a chance to choose. Um, which kind of leads me to, to the next point. We've got one of our clients here, City and Guilds. Um, so they you know, um, offer people uh, courses. Um, and you can sign up independently or with a company. Um, but they have this form that they've built uh, with us to collect people's details. So the number one thing is when people come along to them, it's kind of anonymous data. So they want to get more and more information from you. They've got the email address to start off with. Maybe they're going to want your name. They're going to want your role, the company you work for. How many people are, are there in the company? Are they going to want training too? What courses are you going to want to be trained on? Uh, and what, what kind of uh, qualifications are you going to, going to want? Yeah, so all of this is going to help them build up the email to, to target people, to segment your data a lot further. And that's ultimately what you want to do. You want to segment. You want to target specific groupings of people. But that's not the holy grail. The holy grail is the next step along. Not just targeting people, um, but personalization. Oi, you. You, at the back of the room. Sir, with the check shirt, looking at me, smiling at me now. You, that's personalization, you know? Me shouting out to a room, no one knows who I'm talking to. And that's that mass email sending out to everyone. Until you really, talk, sorry, sorry, you've gone, you've gone red now because I was talking to you. Um, <laughs> but if you, if you really start targeting people, uh, understanding more and more about them, you can target and you, can, you, you know who I'm talking to now. Yeah? That's what we're trying to look for when it comes to personalization, that one-to-one -one approach. You're moving away from the robotic approach of, of marketing automation. And, and now it's more like a one-to-one -one email. You know, as you walk into a store, how you would actually interact with someone if they walked into a brick and mortar store. The next step is then we, we want to be, we be automating. Okay? We've got the data. We know who we're, t we're contacting. We're segmenting. We're personalizing the message. All of that data is there. All of that information is there. We can now automate the email. So things like welcome, welcome emails, you can automate that whole thing. An abandoned basket email, abandoned browse email is perfect for automation. You, know, you already know what someone's looking for. They've been on the site. You, it's timely and it's effective. You know? We can get them at the right point in time. And that's why we use um, automation. 
Right, so I've kind of blitzed through those three or four points, you know, things, essentials you need in order to, to sort of get ahead. But you're probably thinking now, well, you know, it's easy for you to say, Gav, I'm panicking now. How do I actually get this done? How am I going to get to that email promise land? You know, there's too many steps here. I don't have that sort of time. But I've got an example here from uh, one, of our, one of our clients um, who's actually a publisher. So Shortlist Media, um, they actually did this presentation for us um, a few months back. Um, and I thought it was so good, I asked Lee, I said, can I steal it from you? And um, I'm doing it anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, so, so Shortlist Media, um, and specifically the stylist, um, you know, using us and wanted to, wanted to get over a problem they had. But let's kind of go into the background. They've got a number of these uh, different uh, publications which are fueled by um, advertising in their campaigns. That's where they, they, they get the money from. And Lee had a problem. You know, there's only three of them in their team. Okay? Um, they're working across all of those brands that we looked at just before, um, sending 168 million emails and 1,600 campaigns within the year. So that's a lot of work for just the three of them. Okay? Even more work when you move to the next step and you realize that they said they had no strategy. Um, they were sending out a, a mass email to everyone. The email was hand-coded. Now that's painful, <laughs> you've grimaced there as well. Uh, we're gonna get into that bit in a second. Um, there's limited uh, acquisition of data. Um, the actual data they had as well was very limited too. Um, and the revenue just wasn't there. So what did they do to, to move through to the next step? Um, well, they put this sort of plan together. They wanted to acquire more data, and not just, not just mass, not just uh, the numbers there, but quality of data as well, building up what they knew about these people, which meant that the preference center had to be built, you know, getting more information from people. So you could personalize the emails. So again, it was that one-to-one, -one, that relevant email uh, sending to people. Hopefully then you can retain more business, and at, at the end of it all, they're gonna analyze and see if things are working, and then go back full circle again, okay? So let's go through the, the different stages. First off, they wanted to um, segment their database. So they're sending out five emails, uh, one per day, um, and different types of emails. You've got food and drink, uh, books, beauty, fashion, travel. But not everyone wants to receive all of those. So they sent out an email to, to people so they can choose which, which one of these uh, emails they want to receive on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay? Great example there. Works really well. Next up. How do you actually acquire the data in the first place? You know, so it worked fine for people they had on the database. They could choose their preferences, but actually acquiring data. They used the real estate they had. The website, there's a little wedge, uh, widget on the bottom there. They can collect data there. Use a pop-up. I get a show of hands. How many people have a pop-up on their website? Yeah? You should all be showing your hands. Get, get your hands up. You know, it's, it's, it's a great way of, of, of collecting data. Yes, it interrupts people. You know, if you put your consumer hat on and you were asking, you know, do pop-ups work? You'd probably say, hell no, they're really interrupting, they're really annoying. But for us, collecting data, they're brilliant. They do stop you, but, you know, th there's a reason for it. So, uh, so there's that option. Um, competitions as well, collecting data from there. Um, fashion promotions and also all types of social media, driving people back to the website so they can acquire their data. Next thing was uh, the templates. Right, so I, I talked about uh, them coding the templates each time they sent out the email. Now here's the process. They would decide what was gonna go into the email. That would go to a designer. The designer would go back to them and say, is that what you wanted? Actually, we needed to change something. You go back to the designer, they'd design something. They'd go back to them again. They said, yeah, that's fine. They would go back to the designer. The designer would have to code it so it's ready for the email. Then it would go over to them. Then they'd go, actually, you know what? We needed to add something into this template. Really sorry. So it'd go back to the designer. You'd have to code something. You'd have to go back to them again. Is it all good? Yeah, let's code it. Perfect. And we're going to change something, but let's just send it out anyway. Every single time they were going to send out an email. Yeah? Does that sound like a, a nice place to be? No, not really, no. So they came to us and they said, can you build us a template? So we have an easy editor in, in .mail, it's drag and drop. So we built them a template with different, what we call elements. Um, you've got the, the header, um, hero image, the, the actual bulk of it, the meat of the email, like what's, what was the purpose of it, driving people through to the site, um, offers if they wanted to have offers in there. And then two blocks, which we're gonna go through in a minute. Preferences and um, you know, what did you think about the, the email? So if we go through that, the feedback form, first off, was really great for them. 
Now this is really powerful. All you're doing is asking people, was this a good email, yes or no? If it's not, they can go through and give you more information about why it isn't, or if it is, again, the same sort of thing. So they're learning all the time about the email, refining it, making it sure it's right for the people they're sending to. Okay. Next up, preference block. When I asked Lee about this, he actually swore. He said, this is the fucking nuts, this thing. Right? It really works for us. Because what it's doing straight away, it's telling people directly in the email what they're signed up for. Yeah? Straight away, you can see in the email what you're signed up for. It's a bit of an upsell as well, because you might think to yourself, actually, why am I not signed up for fashion? Yeah? I wouldn't be signed up for fashion. I click the link. But all the time, you have the power to either remove or add yourself to these areas here. Really powerful stuff. So what, was the, uh, what were the results that we're having out of this? Well, by using the template, it helped them to refine the design of the email. So straight away, they're moving from a lengthy email to, to a shorter, more punchier email. Now, did that help them? Well, actually, yeah, the proof was in the pudding. They had the, the stats here of their open rates after changing the campaign. Straight away, they're having a, an increase of 32% in the open rate, which means a happy sales team. Why is it a happy sales team? Because they can go to the advertisers and say, well, this is the open rate we're getting. And not just that, we know exactly how many people we're sending to because we're segmenting. We've got a preference center. We know exactly who we're sending to now. Really powerful stuff. And then when it comes to uh, the positive feedback, again, they were monitoring, monitoring everything and they were understanding exactly what people were liking. Yes, sometimes you get bad results, but you use that information to change the campaign to make it better going forward. All the time they're learning about what they're doing with their email. Now you're thinking this must have taken an absolute age. Well, no, it took four weeks. At first, you know, the first week was tough. They had to really dedicate some time to, to understand exactly what they were gonna do, some real blue sky thinking. So getting the template built, um, the, the, the preference center, identifying what it is you're actually gonna send out to people, you know, going through the reporting, understanding what's actually happening, and constant testing on the campaign. And that's where it got them to. And then the next week's all about you know, just tweaking little bits and pieces to make sure you've got the, um, the, the right email going out each week. So where were we before? We had no strategy, you know, mass mailing out to everyone. It, it, I guess a little bit of a mess, really. And this is where we are now. We've got a full test and, and, and learn strategy. And it's really important, this, because I've seen people do sort of A-B testing, bits and pieces like that, but what we want is constant testing on our emails across the board on every single thing so we know exactly what's working for us. You know, we can't just stop and say, we've done one week of testing, that's it, we know exactly how things are working. It's not how it works. There are gonna be people adding themselves to the mailing list all the time. You're gonna be learning about things all the time. Continue uh, to, to test. The easy editor. I mean, this is in here, they said that, that's one of our tools, the Easy Editor. I think the main point here is to utilize the tools you have to hand. You know, they might be using another product, you shouldn't use another product, use .mailer. Um, yeah. But you know, if, if you're using another product, you've got to use the tools that you have to hand properly. And that's why they've put Easy Editor here. They've segmented the send so they know the groups of people they can actually send to. They're acquiring data better because they know all of the touch points on the website and not forgetting offline data as well. Um, and the emails are led by the data they're acquiring, and that's really key. And then lastly, they're actually making some money off this because, again, as I said, they know who they're sending to, they know the open rates have in increased, um, and it's easy for them to sell on. So what are the next steps? Well, you know, it's worked for, for the stylists, so they're going to be running this across all of their other publications as well. It's, it's simple to move on to that. Um, so what, what do I want you guys to take away from all of this? Well, it's the fundamentals really, is to really understand the people you're sending your emails out to. Now, without that, you, you might as well just, just give up. You, know, you, you should be understanding who you're sending emails to. Think about yourself. If you, if you received an email from someone who didn't quite know you, you'd either ignore it, you'd be emotionally unsubscribed, as I like to call it, or you'd unsubscribe from the email. Okay? Target personalize the emails. So it's, it's, it's as if it was for you. And that's the, that's the route you need to go. But if all else fails, follow our mantra. First thing is think big, have blue sky thinking, really understand what it is you want to gather from your email marketing um, uh, campaigns and program. Start small, you gotta start somewhere, so start small. Maybe it's just one um, automated welcome email, but get that first. And once you've done that, 
have some learnings from it and scale quickly. Really drive yourself forward. Okay, thank you very much.